Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today to be doing this tour of our homeschool classroom. I have been working on it for a couple of months now and I've been working closely with Tanisha Lyons-Porter of Natural Born Organizers. She's been helping us get organized and we didn't actually get to do the shopping trip that we'd hoped to because of the safer at home um, COVID-19 recommendations that we stay at home unless it's absolutely necessary. But uh, based on what I already had and a couple of things I had picked up before uh, these recommendations were put in place, I think we're at a good enough place for me to be able to share a pretty final product. So I think the three major themes for this tour of our homeschool classroom is really about how we are using different spaces. So just kind of the space planning element and then also the curriculum that we're using and then the supplemental materials uh, and games and kind of manipulatives, those kinds of things that we use to enhance the learning in our homeschool classroom. So I'll try to make sure that I cover all of those things. If you are thinking about setting up a homeschooling space in your house, there are a couple of things that I think are, you know, must haves or at least very, very strong recommendations. For the things that I feel pretty passionately about, I wanna make sure that um, I call them out now so that you can see them as we're doing this tour. The first thing is just the classroom rules. So some sort of rules of engagement that establish kind of the culture of your homeschool classroom. And this is something that I worked on collaboratively with my daughter when we started homeschooling together. The second thing, pretty obvious, is just a dedicated place to work. You need a workspace. Um, I think a desk is great, but even beyond a desk, you may want to consider a place for collaborative learning. A lot of times in our homeschool model, we work with other students and even because I have two children there are sometimes things that we want to sit down and do together so consider definitely a desk and if you have the space to accommodate it uh, a table space so my daughter doesn't use a desk in our homeschool she uses the table as her desk space uh, so that's shared with my son and then also when other students come it's the same space that we use for collaboration Another thing that you're probably going to need is a teacher desk space or a workspace for you yourself as the instructor. So I definitely have my own desk here and I have another space, a couple of spaces that are just for me where I keep materials, supplies, different things that belong to me. Uh, I work out of this space, but I am also the homeschool teacher, so I have that dual function going on here. Another thing is you're going to need furniture or a place to keep and organize your school supplies and your office supplies because there are plenty when you're schooling at home. Another thing that you're going to need is a place to keep and organize books and reference materials for each child. So I highly recommend that um, each child have their own space where they're keeping the different materials for their different subjects. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Even though my son is in traditional school, he also already has that kind of locker space here in our homeschool classroom. And finally, you need a really excellent planner for yourself. If your child's old enough, they can have their own planner. My daughter's in middle school, so she has a planner that we coordinate together. And you could also consider having a whiteboard. We have a whiteboard. We're not really heavily intense on the what usage of the whiteboard on a daily basis because we do use our journal systems, but I still recommend that you have it uh, even as just a place to look up and see what day it is, what's the date, and what you might want to expect during the day. So that's pretty much the list of things that I think are either essential or highly desirable for setting up your homeschool classroom space. Uh, you don't necessarily need a huge space. We don't have a huge space uh, here. It's just an efficient space that we are enjoying and using. It's a space that the kids usually use for play. Our house is three story and each story is pretty much lofted. The second floor belongs to the kids. This is where they sleep. They have their own bathroom and then they have this great kids club space that kind of doubles as our homeschool classroom. So. Um, there are toys here, there are games here, there are learning materials here, things for arts and crafts for them. All of that is kind of contained on one floor, which brings a lot of sanity to our household overall. So I'm just gonna tour you guys around and show you what I've got going here. So as I mentioned, the second floor of our house is a lofted space and it is dedicated to the kids. It's really great. There's a lot of natural light in this space because it is lofted and open and so we've got these really big beautiful windows that just flood this area with sunlight which make it nice and bright and here we've just got this couch 
It's actually um, a hideaway bed, a sofa bed. So when we have visitors, sometimes we use this couch in that way in the space, but um, there's just TV here and video games. So we can have the kids sit here and access the television and have video games. We also have this popcorn popper, so it makes a great space for movie nights. But as far as the learning part of it goes, this is a great space for them to be able to just cozy up with a book. It's a big enough couch that one can take one side, one can take the other, and um, they can enjoy themselves while they're reading. It's kind of like a reading nook area as well as an entertainment area at the end of the day, if they're having screen time or if it's on the weekend, um, traditionally that's when we allow them to watch some TV or watch a movie. So that's what's going on here. So we've got this little basket in the corner that houses Lincoln's lightsabers, but also lightsabers that he crafts. So he's got all these craft materials and a little supply box there that he uses to actually create his own lightsabers. <laughs> I also have this really nice storage unit that we actually got at Home Goods, if I am remembering correctly. I really like it. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge because there are these mirror door, or I'm sorry, these glass doors on the front, so you can see directly in. So it makes it a little bit of a challenge in, ter in terms of keeping a cohesive flow. And something I had intended to do with Tanisha was to actually go shopping to see if we could find baskets to put inside these spaces but these are primarily really toys for play beyblades legos sometimes we can use legos in learning there's a marble run here and then we have um, small animals that sometimes are part of craft craft uh, projects and then um yeah little piece of the marble run fell out uh there's the popcorn popper there and then we've just got these drawers that have discs Nerf guns, there's a whole drawer for that. And then we've also got ac action figures. So this unit is primarily more play than education, but sometimes there's a little bit of overlap. Then we have another unit here, which is for storybooks, picture books. So I'm actually really pleased and proud because I had a friend recommend an organization system for me for these storybooks. So recently the kids and I went through and made sure that this book collection is in alignment with our new system. And as you can see on the furniture, there are just these different colored stars and it kind of coordinates to the type of book. So if you look on the back of each book now, there's a star that actually coordinates with that. So we've got this blue section that is, um, primarily books about uh, the Bible or religious books, spiritual books. And I actually want to, while I'm here, kind of shout out this uh, NIV Adventure Bible. My children are really, really enjoying it. So all of the books with a blue star would be returned to that space. We also have this purple section that um, pretty much features characters or stories that are um, related to African-American or African history. So we have a pretty decent collection there of different kinds of great books. And I definitely have some recommendations. Maybe one day I'll do a review of all of the different books that we have there. But those are organized and together. I've always been very passionate about making sure that my children have uh, books and learning materials where they are represented and also even with their toys. It's something that can't be taken for granted because it's not always easy to find dolls and characters that represent uh, children of color. And I think it's gotten definitely much easier with the girls' materials, but with the boys' things, it's still a bit of a challenge. So it's kind of tough to always find action figures or whatever it is um, where uh, my son can see himself represented in these great narratives. So I have that there. And then beyond African American uh, and African culture, uh, re cultural representation, we, we also have several other um, books from different places and books that are in different languages. So green would be books that are strongly representing other cultures. And then these books don't have a label because they're just general story books. Um, in this corner we have uh, pretty much the Dr. Seuss kind of books and sets of series. 
And then down here we have board books, baby board books. Um, some of these books are still fun to read uh, for my children, but also we have those so that when younger children come to the house, uh, they will have some reading materials as well. So that blue cabinet pretty much houses most of our storybook collection. And then on this side, we just have a few books in this basket that are oversized books, but mostly books that represent different specific characters or series. So like American Girl, uh, Lego, Star Wars, um, any of the Marvel adventure series, those books would be found on that side. And they actually also have their own label. So those are all labeled with a red star so the kids know where they go. I also want to point out that we got this really nice divider so that kids can have a little bit of separation during reading time too. So that side of our space is a little bit more recreational, free for all. I would say there's probably just more reading, but sometimes we get on the floor and do different projects. And then down over here is where we have the collaborative learning space, my daughter's workspace, and a few other things that I wanna show. So oftentimes in our homeschool collaborative, we have younger children that come by or just by the house. So we have still that little kitchen set um, that's still enjoyed by children of all ages, honestly. And then just above that, I have um, this cute little cork board that I got that shows some of our favorite holiday cards that we actually have given out and birthday cards. It's, there's the birth announcement for Lincoln when he was young, but just a lot of, um, cute stuff that are kind of family memories. And at the top, like all of their AYSO buttons, including one of mine. You can see if you can figure out which one is mine. And then over here, this is just kind of their area where we acknowledge all of their different accomplishments, medals, certificates, things that are achievements. So I just love this, having this there for them because we just want to show them that we appreciate the hard work that they put in to the different things that they do. They are both accomplished students and great athletes. And then as we move in this direction, this is where it starts to get a bit more academic with my stuff, their stuff, our supplies, and this workspace. So this has had a few different homes, but these are our classroom rules. And they're just hanging here over a picture that Kofi actually sketched. Uh, of Big Ben. That's kind of the theme, obviously, it comes across in our room in the space. We have this kind of London theme going, so you see it in the decor. Um, and everybody always asks, why is that? No, we're not British. Uh, we are Ghanaian. Ghana was a British colony, so there is a little bit of influence of that culture on our culture. But really, I just wanted to have a color scheme that was pretty gender neutral and one that would um, carry them into older ages as they got bigger. So I just wanted to make sure that I had something that could be, you know, ma masculine and feminine and something that um, w wouldn't really matter whether they were younger or older. And I think the Union Jack kind of theme and colors works well for us. So this unit is from Ikea, probably looks familiar, pretty much Everybody knows about this unit, but this is extremely essential. There are actually two pieces that are put together, both from Ikea, the taller, slimmer bookcase here, and then the broader, wider one. Um, so this is so critical for us and just maintaining our organization. And I like to have the bins there so that way we don't see every single thing because I'm trying to keep it as harmonious as possible, even though we have a lot going on. So if you look, I also have used um, the label maker to make labels that kind of explain what's in each cubby. And I went through a pretty extensive process with our organizer. And if you see some of the earlier videos that I did, you can see me actually going through that process with her. But what I have here in this first one is just artwork to file. My kids generate a lot of artwork. They're very creative and it just really accumulates very quickly. So I have this cubby that's here with 
different bins for them and some filing systems so they can put their stuff away and it can be kept if they feel like it's quality. I have these two bins that are for reference materials and manipulatives. So when you open it up, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. There's like virtual reality goggles, um, some great books, different kinds of books, uh, almost like encyclopedia sets that are married to some of these virtual reality goggles and different things. There's some extra supplemental uh, books, math books in there. And the same thing here. We have, you know, lab, some, a little bit of lab equipment, some flashcards, brain quest cards, all different kinds of things. The National Geographic periodicals also go in here, but this is a place where if they are looking for additional information for projects or reports, these are the two cubbies that we would reference typically. So that's different from the storybooks. Um, going up here, this is where we keep our lab science equipment and microscopes. We've got two really great microscopes that I would endorse. This first one was given to us as a gift by grandparents, but we really, really like that. And that comes with a kit to make your own slides. So that's been a lot of fun. And then the second one, we've had actually a really long time, but we've also gotten a lot of use out of it from iTikes. And that one can, is also compatible with an app. Um, and it comes with its own slides that are pre-made, but they are actually really good. And it's still really useful even for my middle school daughter. So I highly recommend that. We also have here, so these are just rocks that they've been collecting from different trips and just from outside and around on nature walks, but that's something that we keep here. And then I also have this little mushroom grow kit that I actually just randomly found one day at a Ross. So we haven't done that yet. I was going to kind of um, end part of our botany uh, unit that we're doing right now with growing the mushrooms. We are growing other plants for botany and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, obviously mushrooms are a fungi, not a plant, but it was still sort of relevant. And then I just have tons of puzzles and games. So all the puzzles and games are kept in here. Um, some good ones, Mastermind, Goldie Blocks, all of that stuff is really great. Both of my kids work with a private tutor. So the stuff that they primarily use with the tutor, we would find in here. And there are some really great manipulatives and games uh, and books for each one of them and those things. But sometimes she brings books and just to make sure that they don't get mixed up and confused with the other stuff that we're using, we make sure she has her own cubby. And then more puzzles and games, arts and craft supplies and coloring and art. So if you look in here, there are crayons, markers, colored pencils, coloring books, and even art books. So like this 50 Impressionist paintings, you should know. I highly recommend that too. That's been really fun for us to go through and look at. Um, but anything that's pretty much related to art, you would find there. We have a bin for electronic devices and that's where we keep our tablets and chargers. We have office and school supplies. So you will find additional notebooks, folders, a laminator. That's usually where I keep, um, you know, extra ink for our printer. And then my own little space for my own books and reference materials. So things that I'm using and doing that are related to school and beyond. That's my own space that nobody should interact with. And then up here, of course, we have our printer. My desk space is just behind this table where we tend to work and collaborate. Sometimes I sit there if the children are working quietly and I can just turn back and check on them and answer any questions that they have. Uh, but Sometimes I also sit with them at the table. It depends on how involved I need to be. And then here we have kind of what would be the equivalent of our locker system. So each one of these filing cabinets is the primary responsibility or belonging to either Laya, Lincoln, or myself. The first one is for me and it just has all of my different things and um, the only one that they really go into here is office supplies and occasionally stationary. And then here uh, we have the blank paper, which is printer paper and other kinds of paper. But then this is really Lincoln's active work and his supplemental work and other important school papers for him. And then for Laya, there's math, language arts, social studies, science, 
and then her important school papers there at the bottom. So that's been a really effective organization system for us so far. At the top, she's keeping the different binders. Um, we reuse the binders, as you can tell, they're well loved, but the different binders for different subjects. Her planner is here. She is uh, really liking it and I'm sure she would endorse uh, this planner. Looks like it's by Molly and Rex. And then the book that she's currently reading is The Little Prince. So she keeps that book at the top. Up here, we have just the most utilized office supplies. So pencils, tape, the label maker, hole puncher, stapler, and then highlighter markers and pens. And then these are just like mostly fun souvenir pens that are different from the ones that we buy. Pretty uniform and standard. And then there's Lincoln's binder, especially for right now that he's doing this COVID emergency homeschooling and the book he's currently reading, which is How to Eat Fried Worms. Um, above that, you will see the whiteboard weekly planner. We have their vision boards that they made earlier this year over here. Um, we also have this great little name plaque that was given by Laya's friend's grandfather in a Mandarin class that she sat in on. And here we also have something that's really cool. Laya made this recently in the app Canva, uh, but it's just a list of things to do and entertain yourself uh, prior to tech time. So if you're done with your work and you're looking for ways to treat yourself uh, to independent fun projects or even ones that you can collaborate on, there's that list as a reference. We have our electric pencil sharpener up here and a couple more reference materials. And then these are Spanish language materials, which we haven't really gotten into. We haven't been very serious about picking up Spanish. Uh, their tutor can teach Spanish. Um, and so she's done a couple of lessons with them, but that's not something we've gotten into seriously. And that's funny because you see this little spray bottle and that's to maintain our botany experiments which are going on here in this light box that we made so i'll just show you guys what's going on this is a light box and we have some different kinds of things growing lia has been doing a great job of maintaining these at least this round we had a round that wasn't as successful but that's something that lives and exists here in this space too for now and something that we just made with some cardboard and foil and some parts from home depot here and then as far as other uh, material for education, we have a couple of globes that we keep up there that's also really great for the kids. This is also the place where we keep the Chromebook. The kids right now only have one Chromebook between the two of them. It's working out okay so far. We have another Chromebook that was damaged. The screen was broken. So I think a project for Lincoln and I um, it's going to be trying to see if we can replace the screen because it's actually more expensive to replace the screen than to just buy another Chromebook. So we'll see if we can do that. And then this is for Lego projects that are completed and are being displayed. So this is a, an area that kind of gets out of control pretty often, to be honest, but uh, I try to kind of keep it limited so that way we can maintain some sort of sense of coherence and sanity around here uh, in this space. I did want to circle back around to this virtual reality set that we got um, from Encyclopedia Britannica. It has so many great books um, that you can use as a reference and you can just put your own cell phone in there and download an app and you can actually do virtual tours to see these different landmarks or to explore space or the ocean or the habitats of different animals. So that's through Encyclopedia Britannica and I wanted to shout that out too. So this is where Lai is keeping most of her stuff for these different subjects. And I kind of want to go subject by subject and talk about what we're using in the curriculum for each one very quick. So this is a snapshot of the different math resources that we're using for sixth grade math for her right now. There is a curriculum that she's following in her hybrid program. So I'm pretty much just doing supplemental math. Oftentimes I let the curriculum take the lead and just whatever the subject matter is they're covering, I try to use these different resource materials to supplement. 
but sometimes too, I just decide that we are going to go over a particular concept and concentrate on that for a couple of weeks. So these are the materials that we're using for math. For ELA sixth grade, what we're doing at home is we've signed Laya up for a course, an online course through the Center for Lit. And so she is reading these books, has read these books so far this year, Watership Down, The Devil's Arithmetic, Henry V, and The Little Prince. So it's a great variety of literature that's age appropriate. In her own free time, just what she's chosen to read are the Land of Stories series, the Keeper of the Lost City series, Call of the Wild, um, and a couple of other books. We have actually a pretty extensive chapter book collection. We don't keep it in the playroom, we keep it in their room. I can uh, do a little bit of a pan of what's there, but I just found also these great writing prompts for grades four to six um, on different subjects because I do like to give her uh, supplemental writing that she does in a journal. She also is big on the Who Was series and I just pulled out Who Was William Shakespeare and Who Was Nelson Mandela. We have several of these books, which you'll see, um, but those are related to the coursework that we've been doing. Um, she, obviously she read Henry V, so Who Was William Shakespeare was great context. And then we studied Geography of Africa in the first semester. So Who Was Nelson Mandela was great. And then I like to use these scholastic books on just reading comprehension, main ideas and summarizing for other uh, practice for her. As I said, we have many, many, many great chapter books for kids. We keep them actually in the kids' bedroom, but I can just pan so that you can get an idea of what they are reading or Lai has been reading. All different kinds of books. This year for homeschool geography and social studies, we did geography of Africa, and now we are in a speeches that change the world class. Big part of our Geography of Africa class was actually an online uh, resource, which is videos that sing the countries to help the children learn the countries. We actually have this puzzle uh, from Ghana that our grandparents brought to us. So that was really great for being able to learn the geography, even though I think since that puzzle came to us, a couple of the countries have changed because of different kinds of power struggles. But we also got this World Atlas, which has been really great online. And then I have just tons and tons of great children's books um, on different African leaders, on Egypt. We saw a great exhibition uh, not too long ago. That was the tomb of King Tut, King Tutankhamun. So we had lots of great context through that. As far as the speeches class, uh, we. I say we, I mean another mom that I'm co-teaching these classes with. We developed a syllabus based on this book, Speeches That Changed the World. There are newer editions. Um, and then we have some different kinds of supplemental materials. So for example, we studied Abraham Lincoln's speech um, after the battle at Gettysburg and the dedication of that battlefield. Uh, in that book, there's some context, but we have other materials like this that we use to supplement. I do want to say that this book has been fantastic. There are so many awesome speeches in there and it gives a little bit of historical context and we basically just formulate uh, discussion questions and we have been assigning out um, biblio bibliographical presentations and PowerPoint to each one of the students on a rotating basis to give context to the speeches that we read or watch in every class session and discuss the different rhetorical devices that are used. It has been such a delight for me, even as the instructor going through these different speeches, very powerful speeches. So highly recommend this book and, you know, definitely um, leave a message if you have more questions about creating a class on this. For science, we have been using this Exploring Creation with Botany set and then some of the materials that I showed you that I would also highly endorse, just this mushroom, mushroom growing kit. We are growing our own um, plants in the light box that we're transferring to our garden. And then we've just got these little sketching notebooks that we're using to um, sketch Laya and I different things about nature. So that's kind of part of our pollinator series, for example. And then the kids have their rock collection. So these are kind of simple things that um, some to purchase, but some that you can get going on your own with regards to uh, science. So as far as Bible study, 
Um, Lia's found this great devotional app that she likes to use. So there are a lot of different things. There's a daily devotional and prayer. I also really highly recommend uh, this NIV Adventure Bible. And then she usually goes to a Bible study camp on Friday nights prior to our social distancing recommendations. Um, it's called Awana Camp. It's offered through the Delray Church and the children are working through this curriculum, Grace in Action. So between those three things, that's kind of how she spends her time uh, studying religion or whatever we are kind of calling that course Christianity or religion, that exploration. Another great element that I almost forgot to show is my reward system, which is the mom bucks and the mom bin. So here you can just see we have a variety of things and I just replenish the mom bin intermittently uh, with books. You see there's like pop sockets, silly string, umbrella, coffee bean gift card, and the kids just earn these for having outstanding work, having completed their chores or whatever their other responsibilities were. And then intermittently, they can go to buy something out of the mom bin. So something I also recommend if you are setting up a homeschool classroom. Besides the different curriculum that I showed you, obviously Laya is in club soccer and she is also in the ID64 Select program. So that's even a bit more competitive than club soccer. So she has those trainings that we do under kind of what would be physical education. And I also take her out just about every day that she's home and not in the hy hybrid program for one-on-one -on -one private training because obviously I played soccer before. And she also has this great app that her team's been using lately, especially since the social distancing guideline that's called Top Techers that she's been using to challenge herself to develop some more skills. Uh, beyond soccer, there's also music or violin and she does self-directed practice every day. And once a week, we have a lesson. We've tried to go virtual with those lessons since also um, having to comply with the social distancing guidelines. So that pretty much covers everything that we are learning and all of the different uh, materials that we're using and the way our space is organized to help us be successful at homeschooling this year. We are really enjoying it and really loving it. I really appreciate you watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, or leave questions if you have any about any of the things that you've seen here in this video. I hope it's helpful to you setting up your homeschool classroom or even setting up a temporary classroom under the uh, new COVID-19 emergency homeschooling. Please also check out the other videos that I have um, about our homeschool daily routines and also about the tips that I have for homeschooling under these new emergency guidelines. Thanks so much.